Hey everybody, Nick Maxwell here. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video just kind of explaining, um, first off, uh, why after a few batches last year, uh, the Helix blades uh, became unavailable. And uh, also the differences between the blades that we're making then versus the blades that we're making now. Um, so the reason that we actually stopped making the blades uh, right after Urchin last year was because um, the blades are made in the U.S and the companies that we get the materials for to make the blades are in the U.S. as well. And uh, the company that Vic was getting the pre prayed carbon from uh, was also supplying carbon to the airline companies for the big jumbo jets. And obviously a little toy helicopter company. We, didn't, we weren't ordering near the quantity that the airline companies were. And so we were pr pretty, pretty far down um, on the priority list for getting carbon. And uh, when Vic did get carbon, um, you know, as the airline companies needed slight parameters changed for their application of pre -pray, um, that obviously changed the way that the Helix Blade process, the, the manufacturing process for Helix Blades, it would affect that as well. So it seemed like Vic was always chasing his tail trying to adapt to whatever the pre -pray was that he was getting. Um, so in turn, we were just producing almost no quantity of sellable blades, and it was just a headache. Um, so Vic actually sat down and took the time to build his own uh, carbon saturation machine. So he's making his own pre preg in-house now. Um, th that really changed a lot of things for Helix Blades, more than just um, now we're obviously gonna be able to uh, keep up with uh, the demand. And also as well, um, since he got a chance to play with the resin and the content and all, all these other things, um, we're making a lot better blades now. Um, the first thing you'll probably notice when you pull Helix blades out of the package is that the surface finish is quite a bit more shiny and a lot less porosity than what we had before. Um, one reason that was actually kind of important that I think I should probably explain. Um, we don't use any gel coat or paint uh, on rotor blades uh, for performance reasons. Um, the paint and gel coat is actually just dead weight that adds no structural strength and tends to limit the CG's uh, positioning a little bit um, with all the weight. So uh, the skin surface that you see on the blades is actually the, the pre preg and the resin is forming the surface. So um, it, it actually worked quite a bit better that he got to, he's now making, I guess you could say, a dedicated pre preg for RC rotor blades. Um, probably the next thing um, I'd like to talk about a little bit is the difference in performance. Um, during that time, it also gave us a chance to play around a lot with carbon layout and um, a few other different things, um, core materials and things like that. And uh, we found that there's actually still a lot of performance left in just the general Helix design um, in terms of CG positioning and weighting. And so uh, I kind of took in uh, the, the first batch of blades that we came out with, I really liked and they worked very well for my flying style. Um, but as guys were getting them in the public that had different flying styles, uh, they would say, okay, well, we like that they do this, um, but they don't necessarily do this as well or something like that. Um, so my goal became was to, my goal uh, at that point in time was to get the blades working for a broader range of flying styles. And I think we've done that. Um, there's a lot of guys flying uh, this newer version of the blade now and uh, with varying flying styles and it works quite well. Um, even just as a, my own testament, I actually use the same rotor blade on my FAI machine now as I do my 3D machine. Um, so there's, there's that. I think that says a lot right there because um, that's that's kind of the two opposite um, ranges of flying styles. Um, also, the other thing I wanted to touch on: um, when you get Helix blades, take them out of the package and bolt them on your model. Um, if you don't change any of your setup, if you leave your setup the same, probably what you're going to notice is that the blades they'll do something a little different. This is a little different. That's a little different things like that. Um, but what I would do want to do is encourage you to explore the different capabilities of the blades. Um, number one, they have really good stability. So in high speed flight, um, the blades actually at most times let you turn your rotor head gain up quite a bit. Um, at the same time, they also have a very fast cyclic rate. That doesn't mean you have to use the fast cyclic rate. They still feel quite linear off center, um, you know, at the slower rates or more normal rates. Um, but as a contest pilot, that's something I've always looked for in rotor blades. I tend to know the amount of rates that I need to do my maneuvers and do the routines that I want to do, um, but at the same time, you almost need a little bit of overhead. And a lot of times, um, you know, blade manufacturers they tend to get they tend to set the, the blades maximum rate to where it's comfortable. 
Um, and at that point in time, you can throw more cyclic pitch in it and they just get louder or flutter or something. Um, but in this case with the Helix, um, my goal was to actually create a blade that felt linear throughout a very broad range of cyclic input and still give pilots that extra overhead if they need it. Uh, the other thing that we've changed between um, the blades that we're making before and the blades we're making now, um, it, we switched to a lighter core and actually since Vic is making his own prepreg, uh, the prepreg is so consistent and it's also quite a bit lighter than the prepreg we were using before so that opened up more CG ranges. Um, before the blades were very stiff torsionally but they had quite a bit of span wise flex. Um, and now we've actually eliminated the span wise flex and also uh, kept the same torsional rigidity. Uh, so the blades, we call them the 2x4 blades now because they're actually really stiff. Um, but uh, we were able to correct and get the same stability and performance out of the blades being that stiff um, by moving the CG around. So now uh, the collective response is quite a bit more. Um, I think probably the biggest thing that I heard from everyone, um, the other pilots out flying the blades, was that when you'd stop on collective they were a little softer. Um, which I've always tended to like um, because it, it felt linear to me. Um, and so now we've adjusted the CGs and the blades and changed the airfoil just a little bit to get that linear feel back, but actually then at the same time have the aggressiveness and the pop that the guys are wanting. Um, one of my other goals with the way 3D is changing now, and obviously we have gyros and very powerful servos and very powerful motors and things like that, um, it, it kind of struck me, okay, well, if we've got all this, why don't we make the cyclic stop like the tail rotor, um, kind of, you know, hit hard and have that capability there. Um, and so by increasing the span wise stiffness along the, along the blade and actually having the blade a little bit different stiffness, say at the root versus the tip um, and things like that, we play around a lot with that, um, you can actually get the rotor head, you know, to stop like a tail gyro. So not only is the rotor head feeling precise, um, but it feels incredibly crisp as well. So I think those are some um, good changes for the blades. Um, the other thing is, is we're actually producing a blade that's light enough that you can use 715 millimeters on nitro, and you're not going to load the motor that much. Um, that's always been a fine line, length versus weight on nitro models. And so uh, I personally really enjoy flying nitro, so it was important that uh, we got the blades light enough uh, that they uh, work well on electric and nitro. Uh, in terms of safety, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little video in here. Um, we've taken a lot of uh, time and precaution on safety and probably one of the biggest things um, that makes the blade safe is that the safety wire is actually wrapped around the brass insert in the blade. So the safety wire is crimped around your main blade bolt and then the lead is secured to that safety wire that runs down the length of the blade. Um, so uh, here's the video to show a little bit uh, more in detail what this looks like. Okay, uh, here we've got the safety wire and the lead that goes in a Helix uh, main rotor blade. Um, just kind of want to show this for the safety aspect. Really strong blades here. Um, number one, the safety wire wraps around the actual bolt hole uh, for the blade. So the safety wire isn't going to separate from the, the, the root of the helicopter. And also the safety wire goes into the lead and has a zigzag, zigzag pattern in here into the melted lead. So it isn't going to go anywhere either. Okay, so you can see the lead is obviously very secure to the helicopter. Um, the other difference um, with Helix blades versus a lot of other blades on the market is that they are actually one continuous piece of carbon around the entire blade. It's not two halves sandwiched together. Um, in this case, that leads to a really strong leaning edge um, because all of the carbon that's in the blade is also in the leaning edge. So, um, you know, in an auto tip over, um, obviously we've all had screws come loose and you know go through the rotor blades. Uh, it might chip the resin just a little bit, but structurally the blades are still safe and fine to fly. Um, so I really like that because you know you tip over in an auto, put a little chip in it, and well, okay, most likely the blades are perfectly safe to fly since it's got that extra strength there. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that currently um, I've got 715 millimeter main blades and 695 millimeter main blades. And uh, by the time I get this video edited and posted and everything, um, I'll probably start posting stuff about uh, a 550 millimeter size, 115 millimeter tail blades, and 105 millimeter tail blades. Um, 
The other thing is I do plan to do like a 500 size helicopter, so 425, 430 millimeter size blade, and then also a 600 size, uh, 600 to 625 millimeter blade, 615. Um, I haven't decided those exact sizes, so um, if you have any input, input on that, um, I would definitely appreciate it. So hopefully this explains a little bit um, with the manufacturing process of the blades and uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to keep up with quantity and start filling the demand that we had last summer and uh, also explain a little bit of uh, you know, how the helix blades fly and if you do have a set how to get the most performance out of them.